Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be summing an infinite series. We have x squared plus 2x to the fifth plus 3x to the eighth, where the exponents are 2, 5, 8, 11 goes up by 3, and the coefficients are 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. You get the idea? We could also write this with sigma notation, which we're going to look at later, but this is what the series is all about. Of course, x is between negative 1 and 1, so this converges. We're not looking for something that does not converge. And I'll be presenting two methods. And I think the two methods are very different, in my opinion. If you know of a third method, which I'm pretty sure you do, please share with us. Because a lot of times I'm surprised by all these amazing methods that you come up with. I'm very grateful for that. So let's see how we can solve this problem. And I'm going to start with the second method because we haven't started with the second method uh, for a while. I think I did it once lately, but anyways, I want to start with the second method. So for this one, since the exponents go like 2, 5, 8, 11, they go up, start with 2 and they go up by 3, I'm going to start with the original one. Like, forget about the coefficients. Can I find the following sum, which is x squared plus x to the fifth, plus x to the 8th, plus x to the 11th, right? And the answer is, yes, we can. But here's what we need to do. We need to know the infinite geometric series formula when, they, when it converges, right? So what is that formula? The formula says, if you have something like 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed, so on and so forth, all the way to infinity and beyond, allow me to say that, this becomes 1 over 1 minus r. But in some cases, the first term isn't 1. It could be something like this. A, and then AR, and then AR squared, and then AR cubed, in which the common ratio is still the same, but we have a different first term, okay? Which is different from 1. Of course, in this case, I want A to be different from 1. And this will be just A over 1 minus R, because we can factor out an A, or we can multiply both sides by A. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So now... We can use this idea here. How do you find the common ratio? That's the good question, right? That's a million dollar question. If you divide the second term by the first or the third by the second, any consecutive terms backwards, then you're going to get the common ratio. In this case, R would be X to the fifth divided by X to the second, which is X cubed. In other words, the question is, what do you need to multiply X squared by to get X to the fifth? The answer is X cubed. Make sense? Okay, cool. So we can go ahead and apply that formula. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and show you a result from Wolfram Alpha. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can interpret this correctly and get the answer right? What do you think? Some ideas? Okay, great. Ready to check? Ta-da! Okay. Unfortunately, in this form, Wolfram Alpha is unable to determine the general term. I think Wolfram Alpha should be a little smarter. We're still smarter than Wolfram Alpha, but that's okay because we're human beings, right? Great. We'll talk about this one more time, but let's go ahead and take a look at our original expression. I mean, not the original one, the one we're going to use to get the original, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start with this. Notice that it's the same thing without the exponents. And we do know that this is the first term x squared divided by 1 minus r. r is x cubed, remember that? So we're going to write it like this. Cool. We got this sum, but I do need... 1x squared plus 2x to the fifth plus 3x to the eighth, so on and so forth. What does that mean? Let's start the same series at x to, x to the fifth power this time. Okay. And then, so our first term is going to change, but the, the common ratio is not going to change because we're using the same series. Make sense? We could also express it as follows. Take the first series, the sum, and subtract x squared from it. It would give you the same thing. I mean, it should, right? Take this, in other words, and subtract x squared because we're missing it. And then make a common denominator. You'll see that you get the exact same thing. But this is a little easier because we're using the formula over and over. Make sense? Okay. Now, notice that if I add these two things in columns, like if these two things, I'm getting 2x to the fifth, which is good. Now, I'm going to add more to it because I do need more x to the eighth. So let's go ahead and start this time at x to the eighth. And of course, that's just going to change the first term. Therefore, we're going to get something like this. Do you want to go further? I don't think you need to, but let's do one more time. I'm going to use this x to the 11th over 1 minus x cubed. You get the idea? 
This will continue. Of course, it's gonna stop at x to the 11th, but after that, x to the 14th, we're gonna have to add one more and keep doing this. Kind of like a upside down pyramid maybe, or kind of like a triangular style. Make sense? Now, when you add these terms, you're actually gonna get what you want or what we want, right? Notice that? So when you add these things, this is gonna give you x to the second plus two x to the fifth, plus three x to the eighth, plus four x to the eleventh, dot, 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 and this is what we want. Awesome, great, <laughs> good news on the left-hand side. What about the right-hand side? Let's check. We have fractions, infinitely many fractions, with the same denominator, so why not just add them, or add all the numerators, and guess what? That's going to give you another series. Did I say another? Well, it's actually the same series. Uh-oh. So we can go ahead and replace this with this guy over here, which is x squared divided by 1 minus x cubed. But guess what? It's being divided by 1 minus x cubed two times in a row. What does that mean? It means it's being divided. So in other words, we have x squared divided by 1 minus x cubed divided by 1 minus x cubed. It just means x squared is divided by 1 minus x cubed squared. That's what it means, right? So we got the answer. Yay, good news. This was just the first method, so stick around because we're about to start the first, second method. Wait a minute. Wasn't this the second? Sorry about that. I got confused. Um, this was the second method, and now we're going to take a look at the first method. Ready? Because we did the second method first. Does that make it the first method? No. So the second method is the second method. Now let's go ahead, ahead and do the first method. So to get the sum that I'm looking for this one, I want to go ahead and when I say this one, I'm talking about this one right here, right? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do this. This time we're going to start with something slightly different. Just, a bit, just slightly, right? We're going to consider a geometric series, an infinite one, uh, with the same common ratio, but arranged differently. It has a different first term, therefore it has different terms. Make sense? So they're all powers of uh, multiples of three. The powers are multiples of three. So how do we get to from three, six, nine? How do we get to two, five, eight? The answer is as follows, but let's go ahead and write this down first. What is this equal to? This is one over one minus X cubed. Again, the same formula, a over one minus r, don't forget that. This is for infinite geometric series. Very easy to remember, but super duper useful. Okay, great. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do something different. Remember I told you with the first one, we were kind of truncating it and adding it like a triangular fashion, but now we're gonna do a little bit of hocus pocus, or should I say calculus? Okay, very close, right? So we're gonna go ahead and differentiate it. The derivative of one is zero. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and then the derivative of x to the 6th is 6x to the 5th, and then 9x to the 8th. Uh-oh, we got the answer, but what is 1 over x cubed differentiated? Hmm, here's what we need to think about. How do you differentiate 1 over uh, 1 minus x cubed? You can think of it as 1 over 1 minus x cubed to the power of negative 1. When you differentiate it, you have to move the negative 1 to the front and reduce the power and multiply by the derivative of the inside, which, is come, uh, which comes from the chain rule, negative 3x squared. Put the negatives together, they're going to make a positive, right? Two wrongs don't make a right, but two negatives will make a positive. And then from here you get the derivative, which is 3x squared divided by 1 minus x cubed to the second power. Nice. But we'll make it nicer. Ready? We're going to go ahead and... Now, do this. Factor out a 3. Why? Because when you factor out a 3, you're going to get the following. Take a look at this. This is amazing. x squared plus 2x to the fifth plus 3x to the eighth. Yes, it's the sum we've been looking for for so many years. Not really. I mean, for the last maybe 8-9 minutes. But if you divide by 3, both sides, what's going to happen? Ta-da! You're going to get the answer. Make sense? So the answer is x squared. Oops, I was supposed to write an x cubed here. Yes. This is the sum I was looking for, and that's the answer. If you compare it to the first one, I mean the second method, to the second one, you get the same idea because it's the same series. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. 
like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. By the way, I have another channel called A plus VI. Don't forget to check it out. It's about complex numbers and I'm publishing a video every day and bye bye.